what's up guys my name is Ron from comics and stuff and as promised in my last video here is part two through my recent trip in New York Comic Con now in this video we're gonna go through the NECA Super 7 as well as take a look at the HasLab Hell Charger and we're gonna kick stuff off right away starting with the Super 7 booth right here on the top shelf we have wave one and wave two of the Toho Ultimates Then we also have the upcoming Wave 3 showing off the Godzilla as well as the Destroyer. The Godzilla isn't painted but the Destroyer looks awesome. Now underneath them we also have the Silver Hulk Ultimate and again they are painted but you can see the figures as well as the accessories and back there there's also the throne. And on the final bottom shelf is just a bunch of turtle figures in their packages and although I wanted to see them outside the package, this is still good enough. And over here we got some Godzilla masks that I think are appropriate considering that Halloween is just around the corner. Underneath them we got some Mars Attacks 4 inch figures I'm guessing. Next to that we got Wimbledon Green as well as a Wimbledon Green book. We also got a creature from the Black Lagoon mask and some figures dealing with universal monsters as well as Metaluna Mutant. A Gorilla Biscuits retro mask right next to that and at the very bottom a glow in the dark Huckman and Joe eyeball figure from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now we're heading into the supersized vinyl figures. Starting things off with Mummy Boy and Reptar from Rugrats. Bottom of them is Peanuts. Now we're going to the Queen of All Hearts, Stitch as well as Ebenezer Scrooge. And here we got socks from the Lightyear movie. Personally, I haven't seen the movie, but the cat looks adorable. We also got an alligator that I don't know where it's from, Mickey Mouse and Pinocchio. And now we head into the mechs with a Mecha Godzilla and a Megatron from Transformers. bottom of those we got two Optimus Prime, one original version and one dead black version. This here is my favorite display because I'm a big Gargoyles fan. That was Broadway, we got Bronx, here's Brooklyn. Right here we got Goliath holding the Gomorum Akonorum. Next to him, we got Lexington, and bookending the top shelf right here is the best gargoyle of them all, Hudson. Bottom of the original clan is now the Steel Clan, with one of the robots first. Then we have the suited up Xanatos as well as Daylog. Mona, Angela, and a cute little Angela baby as an accessory I'm guessing, cracked egg and everything. And next up we have the Defenders of Earthwave. Now I can't pick up everything, but I do want to pick up that Phantom. Bottom of all of that, we got a couple of board games as well as some gargoyle packages, which got pretty good art. I'll say that about all the gargoyle packages, they all got pretty good art. Now, I'm not even gonna try to attempt to list all of the characters in this big street diorama from NECA, so I'm just gonna stay quiet and let the music play.
Now moving on from that big diorama, we got the crossover between Universal Monsters and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And ending this shelf, we got some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Secret of the Ooze figures. We also got some Ninja Turtle packages right there, as well as some 1 fourth scale cartoon figures which look great guys and would make a great piece in anyone's room or a shelf or anything. Now we got the Frankenstein, Werewolf and the Mummy figures as well as their accessory sets and the Invisible Man right here. We also got Dracula and his accessory set. Now we got the Dungeons and Dragons wave with Zorak, Grimsword, and War Duke. We also got the Count and Hermit from the Monsters. Awesome. <laughs> And at the very end, we got a creep show figure without the creep show figure being shown, just the box. Chucky and Tiffany life size figures, and I really, really want that Chucky so bad. <laughs> we also got some Predator Lost Tribe figures with Boar, Elder, and Snake versions. We also got Alf with a cat sandwich and everything and a couple of E.T. figures right here and you gotta, you gotta love NECA for just even making figures like this. Series 7 of Toonie Terrors. Some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Signature Edition. We got Foot Ninja, Shredder, and Remet. Elton John Live in 1975. I mean, the piano by itself is, is looking cool. Add an Elton John figure with it, now it's outstanding. We got a Robocop package and eight inch cloth figures of Angus Young from ACDC, as well as Bon Scott. A couple of secret headquarters figures followed by a 6 inch die cast DeLorean. And following that is an Avira figure as well as a Avira's House of Horrors which I don't know what that is. And now we're heading into our final display which happens to be the HasLab Hell Charger. And guys I'll first start you off with the tier figures and that's tier number 1 figure being Mephisto. And tier number zero figure mean Madeline Pryor, aka the Goblin Queen. Moving on from that, we're gonna go to the Haslab Hell Charger itself in its transformed state. And guys, this is a sight to behold. I really do think this is a beautiful car. They exceeded my expectations, particularly with the LEDs. I mean, the way that they flicker and everything mimicking fire is a, it, it's pretty outstanding. I, it, they actually made me a little bit of a believer. <laughs> now here I wanted you guys to see how the Ghost Rider itself looked inside the vehicle with the LED shining on his head. But now heading into the street form version of the car, we see that they got the couple accessories like the Robbie Ray's head as well as his chain in the back of the trunk. And they got one of the chairs so that you guys could take a good look at it. And yeah, the trunk looks like it could hold the Marvel Legends body. Now there was something that did bug me about the street form version of the vehicle. And that was its rims and its hood ornament. I don't know what it's called, the air intake or something. Um, both of those are done in like gray plastic. Now I reviewed two vehicles already and both vehicles that I have reviewed got shinier rims and I thought that was a bummer but again 
This is just something being shown in Comic Con, and there's still plenty of time from now to release to add a sh uh, coat of paint. But they should have done that, you know, coming into Comic Con to really wow everybody <laughs> because the transformed vehicle looks just so good. And the street form version, although it looks good, I feel like it could have looked even better. But tell me what you guys think. Like, what side of the fence are you in this whole HasLab debate? Are you getting it? <laughs> are you getting it? I want to know if you're a Ghost Rider fan, basically. And believe me, guys, I've looked for 112 scale vehicles. And to get a good 112 scale vehicle, it's going to be a little bit on the expensive side. There are very few Bratz cars out there. And with that being said, this might be our best chance to have a true to form vehicle to our Marvel Legends figures. But the question is, will it fun? Anyway, talk about it down below. If you guys liked the video, hit the like button. If you guys didn't like it, hit the unlike button. But subscribe because it really does help this channel out a lot. My name is Ron from Comics and Stuff, and I'll check you guys on the next episode. Peace.